after the $140 billion merger of Citicorp and Travelers Group to build the largest financial services company in the world, Citigroup was established on October 8, 1998. The company's history can be broken down into a number of entities that eventually merged to form either Travelers Group, whose activities included insurance, brokerage, and consumer financing, or Citicorp, an international banking conglomerate operating in more than 100 countries. The Citibank of New York, later Citibank, was established in 1812, followed by Bank Hanloi in 1870, Smith Barney in 1873, Banamex in 1884, and Salomon Brothers in 1910. On June 16, 1812, New York State granted a license to the Citibank of New York with a $2 million capital investment. The bank began operations on September 14th of that year, catering to a group of New York businessmen, and Samuel Osgood was chosen as the organization's initial president. After joining the brand new American National Banking System in 1865, the company's name was changed to the National City Bank of New York, and by 1895, it had grown to be the biggest bank in the country. It became the first American bank to have assets over $1 billion thanks to the 1918 acquisition of American Foreign Bank International Banking Corporation. As it expanded, the bank became a pioneer in the financial services industry, introducing client checking accounts, 1936, unsecured personal loans, 1928, compound interest on deposits, 1921, and the negotiable certificate of deposit, 1921. The bank merged with First National Bank of New York in 1955, becoming the First National City Bank of New York in 1955. The New York was dropped in 1962 on the 150th anniversary of the company's foundation. The company organically entered the leasing and credit card sectors. The bank introduced its first National City Charge Service credit card, popularly known as the Everything Card and later to become MasterCard, in 1967. In 1974, under the leadership of CEO Walter B. Riston, First National City Corporation changed its formal name to Citicorp, with First National City Bank being formally renamed Citibank in 1976. Shortly afterward, the bank launched the Citicard, which pioneered the use of 24-hour ATMs. John S. Reed was elected CEO in 1984. Under his leadership, the next 14 years would see Citibank become the largest bank in the United States and the largest issuer of credit cards and charge cards in the world, and expand its global reach to over 90 countries. At the time of the merger, Sandy Weil, the CEO of Travelers Set, had gathered together a very group of financial companies. Its origins can be traced back to commercial credit, a controlled data corporation subsidiary that while acquired earlier that year and took private in November. Two years later, while was successful in acquiring Primerica Financial Services, a conglomerate that had already acquired Smith Barney and the life insurance company A.L. Williams. The new firm used the Primerica name and used a cross-selling approach in which each entity within the parent company attempted to market the services of the other. They spun off its non-financial activities. Travelers Insurance and Primerica forged a strategic partnership in September 1992 that would eventually result in the merging of the two businesses in December 1993. Travelers Insurance had suffered from bad real estate investments and incurred substantial losses in the wake of Hurricane Andrew. The business was acquired and changed its name to Travelers Incorporated. The business now has the ability to underwrite life and annuities and property and casualty policies. All of the businesses under the newly renamed company adopted the recognizable Traveler's Red Umbrella logo, which was also purchased in the transaction. The merger of Citicorp and Traveler's Group, which resulted in a $140 billion company with approximately $700 billion in assets, was disclosed to the public on April 6, 1998. The agreement would give the banking divisions access to an expanded client base of investors and insurance buyers while allowing travelers to promote mutual funds and insurance to Citicorp's retail clients. 
For $70 billion in stock, Travelers Group acquired all of Citicorp's shares, issuing 2.5 new Citigroup shares for every Citicorp share. About half of the new corporation was owned by the existing shareholders of each company. The characteristic red umbrella from Travelers was used as the new business's logo, which was used until 2007. The new company kept Citicorp City brand in its name. The chairman of both parent companies, John S. Reed and Sandy Wall respectively, were announced as co-chairman and co-CEOs of the new company, Citigroup Incorporated, although the vast difference in management styles between the two immediately presented question marks over the wisdom of such a setup. The company spun off its Travelers Property and Casualty Insurance underwriting business in 2002. The spin-off was prompted by the insurance units dragged on Citigroup stock price because Travelers' earnings were more seasonal and vulnerable to large disasters and events such as the September 11th attacks. It was also difficult to sell insurance directly to its customers since most customers were accustomed to purchasing insurance through a broker. Travelers merged with the St. Paul Companies Incorporated in 2004 forming the St. Paul Travelers Companies. Citigroup retained the life insurance and annuities underwriting business, however, it sold those businesses to MetLife in 2005. Citigroup still sells life insurance through Citibank, but it no longer underwrites insurance. In spite of divesting Travelers Insurance, Citigroup retained Travelers Signature Red Umbrella logo as its own until February 2007, when Citigroup agreed to sell the logo back to St. Paul Travelers, which renamed itself Travelers Companies. Heavy exposure to troubled mortgages in the form of collateralized debt obligation CDOs, compounded by poor risk management, led Citigroup into trouble as the subprime mortgage crisis worsened in 2007. The company had used elaborate mathematical risk models which looked at mortgages in particular geographical areas, but never included the possibility of a national housing downturn or the prospect that millions of mortgage holders would default on their mortgages. Trading head Thomas Maharis was close friends with senior risk officer David Bushnell, which undermined risk oversight. Then on the board of directors of Citigroup, Rubin and Charles Prince were said to be influential in pushing the company towards MBS and CDOs in the subprime mortgage market. Starting in June 2006, Senior Vice President Richard M. Bowen III, the chief underwriter of Citigroup's Consumer Lending Group, began warning the board of directors about the extreme risks being taken on by the mortgage operation that could potentially result in massive losses. The group bought and sold $90 billion of residential mortgages annually. The number of bad mortgages began increasing throughout 2007 and eventually exceeded 80% of the volume. Many of the mortgages were not only defective but were a result of mortgage fraud. On November 3, 2007, claiming that the group's internal controls had broken down and requesting an outside investigation of his business unit. The subsequent investigation revealed that the consumer lending group had suffered a breakdown of internal controls since 2005. In an extensive restructuring intended to reduce costs and boost its long underperforming stock, Citigroup said on April 11, 2007, that it will remove 17,000 employees, or nearly 5% of its staff, as the crisis started to take shape. Even after Bear Stearns, a securities and brokerage company, experienced significant difficulties in the summer of 2007, Citigroup determined that the probability of problems with their CDOs was so remote, less than 1-100 one of 1%, that they were eliminated from their risk analysis. On January 7, 2008, Citigroup declared that it was considering reducing its 327,000 member workforce by an additional 5% to 10% as a result of the crisis. Despite receiving $25 billion in taxpayer-funded government Troubled Asset Relief Program funding, Citigroup was reported as struggling by July 2008 and insolvent by November. In a massive staff cull brought on by four quarters of straight losses and estimates that it was unlikely to return to profitability before 2010, 
Citigroup revealed plans for around 52,000 additional job cutbacks on November 17, 2008, on top of the 23,000 cuts previously made during 2008. The following day, Wall Street markets reacted, causing a decline in share prices that reduced the company's market capitalization from $300 billion two years earlier to $6 billion. In the end, almost 100,000 employees were let go. Its stock market value decreased from $244 billion two years ago to $20.5 billion now. Shares of Citigroup Common Stock traded well below $1 on the New York Stock Exchange. Citigroup had its first profitable year since 2007 and 2010. Compared to a $1.6 billion loss in 2009, it reported a net profit of $10.6 billion. By selling its remaining equity in the corporation toward the end of 2010, the government generated a $12 billion net profit for the general public. In May 2015, the bank announced the sale of its margin foreign exchange business, including City FX Pro and Tradestream, to FXCM and Saxo Bank of Denmark. Despite this deal, industry surveys pegged City as the biggest banking player in the Forex market. The company's remaining foreign exchange sales and trading businesses continued operating in the wake of this deal under the leadership of James Bindler, who succeeded Jeff Feig as the firm's global head of foreign exchange in 2014. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, Citi provided support to cardholders including waiting late fees. It also announced that some lower paid employees would receive a one-off payment of $1,000 to help them through the crisis. This was not just limited to the US. In Singapore where Citi had a large operation, low paid staff would receive $1,200 Singapore dollars. By accident, City wired the American cosmetics company Revlon's debtors $900 million in August 2020. Revlon was one of City's clients. When City tried to sue to recover the majority of the money, it was unsuccessful as of June 2022. Due to Citigroup's risky control systems, U.S. bank regulators penalized the company $400 million in October of that year and required them to upgrade their equipment. A new strategy must be created and submitted to the Federal Reserve within four months. And that's all we have today, with that, I will end the video. Thank you for watching.